that's what I try to keep myself humble with. It's just like this process is really for us. And then everybody else, they just, they get the benefit of the sound. But when it comes to the actual, like what went into any particular song itself, like that's its own cultivation. You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. We did just release the album this morning with the, uh, the Out the Cage project, um, which includes Say Their Name, Song, and everything. Um, yeah, today, right? Yep, it's today. I literally this morning just put them up all, all up on SoundCloud. I actually kind of rushed over here. I still have to add some stuff to de- the descriptions, but um, yeah, it's up on you know YouTube and Spotify and all the uh, all the good stuff. So um, it's out. <laughs> How does that? Um, feels kind of crazy, honestly, even um, just looking at the, you know, it's one thing to have the stuff on SoundCloud and everything, but when you kind of scroll through it on, on Spotify and those sorts of things, it sort of just, all of a sudden feels real um so i think it's been super exciting it's it's kind of a bit um i mean even right now this is kind of the raw reflection period of oh shit this has been sort of four years in the works um a lot of different studio sessions with people a lot of songs that we thought were lost and then um, kind of had new life but yeah, I think it feels special. It feels good. I think it's a, um, it's just one of those things that as you go on in your, you know, development as an artist and little stuff, it's like these kind of projects and moments are kind of a nice little staple to um, remember and also be proud of. So I think, I think that's how I feel is good and ready to, ready to move on to the next, but um, also, yeah, we'll let this kind of ride for a bit and hopefully get it out there a little bit, do some some promo and whatnot, but I feel that. <clears throat> yeah, man, it's like it's always a journey, but I think, you know, the way that you're feeling right now, that's probably how I felt, you know, in December to some degree, because I was like, you know, I've been working on these songs for a few years, but it's just you got to put them out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it doesn't matter how long, you know, they're worked on. It's like people are going to they're gonna listen and then they're going to move on. Yeah. And I just feel like that's – that's what I try to keep myself humble with. It's just like this process is really for us. And then everybody else, they just, they get the benefit of the sound. But when mm-hmm. it comes to the actual, like what went into any particular song itself, like that's its own cultivation. And I'm proud of you for just sticking with it because that's what music is. I was telling somebody yesterday, I was like, bro, it takes a while to figure out your style whether you're a producer or artist or whatever so it's mm-hmm. like you know how do you how do you find out who you are based off of you know the process yeah <clears throat> yeah and I think this too is such a um a special one for me because I've been leaning further into like the electronic and bass realm but this touches in on where all my original inspiration comes from which is you know the hip-hop space and then I guess even younger times, classic rock stuff, but I'm actually incorporating that in some projects I'm working on now. But this is such a, a touch and a like um, a feeling of like I needed this part of my musical expression to be shared too, not just the certain flow I've been in. Um, so I think that that feels good too of knowing that this is a part of me the same way the electronic stuff is the same way these crazy guitar things are and so um for the movie stuff whatever it is um this just feels like another chapter in a in an ongoing book for this for this life that i'm in <laughs> really? yeah so what about with uh with you you obviously you know have a have a song on the project with the say their names um what's sort of your feeling on getting that out there or how that song came about for you and what's your story with that yeah, I just smile because it's it was a situation where, <clears throat> and I think I think we were right around that timeline where like George Floyd had just been murdered. Like there were a series of folks who we we were just getting more names, right? And <clears throat> it's like I didn't really know what 
to do per se about all those different events. However, I, I looked on your page, so I was like, all right, well, let me look, let me listen to this beat, and it it had these different elements that I was rocking with. I was just listening to it. And I was like, oh shit, like I could, I could just imagine something on here. I, I really fell in love with the with the different passages, whether it was people who were literally upset. Um, I heard kind of like some blues and like almost sound like blues and work songs, like kind of combined, you know, it's like just these different elements that really, I think they just really allowed me to process like what we have gone through, whether it was like George Floyd or, you know, 200 years ago, 400 years ago, whatever. And I just felt called to be a part of that process. And um, I also was able to uh, um, to just think about like, well, who else? Who else might want to share that vibe and energy with me? And uh, one of my homegirls, she's, she has uh, just a revolutionary spirit, but she's also had some difficulties with her mobility. So it's like, I'm looking at it like, well, I know that there's this person who has been harmed by the system itself, you know, getting misdiagnosed in the hospital. You know, she's very pro-Black. And I'm also somebody who I, I try to look at it like, if we're going to work together on a specific project, there's a reason. Like, I know that you have similar feelings or relationships with whatever the the song is about. And it it just felt like a natural fit for us to to work together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I came up with my verse. And originally, you know, I was wondering if I should do the, if I should write, like, two verses or whatever. But I just settled with one. And um, I also... I thought back to you know what America promised you know all these all these folks you know like black folks were promised forty acres and a mule. So when I kind of heard the the one sample where it's like da 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 like you know it kind of makes you think of marching like you're marching mm -hmm. for your rights or you're you're mm -hmm. working through some, some struggle. And <clears throat> I was like, you know what, my ancestors they they were told that they were going to be given that and they weren't. So mm -hmm. I need Bodhi. Don't forget the mule. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how that little part just stuck in there. I was like, mm -hmm. yo, we got to we gotta stick to it, especially if we have the resources. It's not like we're without 40 acres and a mule for all the people who have been enslaved in this nation. Mm -hmm. But it's just like we're, as a nation, we're, we're kind of content with letting it just has happened, <clears throat> whether it's police brutality or just not keeping our word. So I think that's that's a lot of the process for me. Um, and there's other stuff, but I think I'll settle with that. Yeah. Yeah. And now, I guess, sort of moving forward with sharing it, um, is there anything on your mind there? Or? Uh. <clears throat> I think it's hard because, I mean, just because a song is out, um, it's like there has to be just action behind it. Mm -hmm. um, like, I just finished reading Talib Kweli's book, uh, Vibrate Higher, and he talks about when he, like, as he was gradually getting, you know, more attention and fame and that sort of stuff, he ended up taking a trip to Ferguson. And when he took that trip, I was actually in college. So, um, you know, I was I was kind of already witnessing, you know, police brutality in its many different forms, like first Mike Brown, then Tamir Rice, then Sandra Bland, and, mm -hmm. you know, like all these different folks while I was in college. But to think that there was an actual artist out there in Talib Kweli who said, you know what, I'm going to go down there to see for myself, like, what's going on? And... He, he actually worked with the activists that were boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about that. Like, all right, you know, that's that's dope. Uh, 
And I'm wondering, what does that look like for me? Because once again, I've, I've already put out, you know, this song with, with you and, and Astro, but um, <clears throat> at least on SoundCloud, you know, we'll, we'll put it out again. But I think it's kind of like, now what, you know? Like, mm -hmm. um, I think that's the real humility in this. It's like, okay, well, like, are we going to attach it to uh, like a specific movement? And you and I, we've had like some baseline conversations about, you know, whatever proceeds we get, we're going to give it to, you know, nonprofit, ACLU, like mm -hmm. uh, we could continue that type of dialogue. But you know, I know right now, like I'm interested in creating a song to to support Wealth of Street Cafe because once mm -hmm. again, if the nation hasn't uh, served certain people, it's kind of like you know what I'm saying. Like they're they're a restaurant, black owned. They've been there for uh, they've been in Five Points for what twenty twenty something years, something like that. Um, technically over 30 years, but they've been at one specific location for like 22 years. And I'm like, damn, you know, like, how do we, how do we just try to work together, make music and then campaign around mm. the the music? And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm at Youth on Record is to kind of see, you know, how did Stefan do it? Because mm. Stefan Brackett or uh, Rear Rabbit, as he goes as an MC with the, the Flowbots, you know, they went to schools and they had conversations. And that was kind of like their activist method, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Youth on Record is born out of those very strategic interventions as artists. You know, they went mm -hmm. to the schools. They went to the rallies. They did the nonviolence training. Like, they traveled the world and, and participated with boots on the ground movement. Mm -hmm. So I think, at least for me, the next step is figuring out, like, how do I work with my collaborators, you know, yourself, mm -hmm. Astro um, included, like how do we work together to create music and then attach it to a cause and mm -hmm. then bring awareness to those causes? How do we supply either financial re educate the public on what is happening and bring awareness to different support systems, whether it's mental health mm -hmm. or uh, Maybe you just need to file your taxes. You know what I'm saying? Like economic oppression, like mm -hmm. it's all real. But when mm -hmm. I think about police brutality, it's just like, you know, maybe we could have a conversation with the uh, Office of Independent Monitor. You know, mm -hmm. have you heard of them? I actually don't know. So, so the Office of uh, Independent Monitor, they are a, they're an organization that basically tries to keep the police accountable mm -hmm. and they have specific cops in different districts go to schools and have conversations with young people so they could try to build relationships with them mm -hmm. and then just share their story you know like what are your rights you know they do a know your rights training so if you know your rights mm -hmm. then you're less likely to participate in the violence even when the police are being violent. Mm -hmm. Yet, none of that stuff is enough because when people are like doing a, a Ferguson sort of deal, and we even had we had some stuff going on in Denver, you know, last year, mm -hmm. uh, and I think even 2020, but it's like, when you have folks in riot gear, do your rights even matter? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like how do we yes, make a song, but then infiltrate into another arena and say, like, this song should be applicable with OIM or, like, who are going to be the partners to mm -hmm. to spread some, uh, just some awareness of what, what we really feel. Yeah. No, I appreciate the thoughts and all that stuff. I actually think about that, too, a lot in my own, my own life around you know, I'm not someone who's ever dealt with police brutality or, you know, having grown up, I come from a very privileged background, both financially and support from my parents and um, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, but then I kind of come to the question of, of myself of, okay, well, if I'm not dealing with the stuff um, and then seeing people who I'm close with or not close with, just the general way the world's going and knowing something's wrong like what can I actually do um I think you had kind of a good word for that but 
the word infiltrate <laughs> is a little bit of how I've sort of seen my my path in the in the business world is yes I do all this music and um, arts and I think that's such a way to kind of connect to our human self and connect with others and kind of that more feeling of even on a local scale or not with music but then I come to the kind of business side and knowing that I have this sort of opportunity along some of these business paths to get into you know where the corporate world just goes wrong they you know you get sucked into the money to the politics of it to all the stuff where these business leaders are just succumbing to whatever it is that gets them their profits and quick buck before they're out and how can I actually knowing where my path and skills lie in in the realm of whether it be business or some kind of company like how can we lean that shift in the other direction um and I think that's actually happened with a lot of our generation um you know more even in the in the gen z and people um so I'm 23 but younger than 23 even um I think there is a massive shift in the in the business world and around how these problems are being addressed. I mean, you saw it too from, you know, when all the George Floyd stuff was happening, companies started to get called out and then they started to do pretend activism in a way and then they got called out for that. But even those sort of things, I think are collectively in the sub positive of that, at least the conversations getting pushed forward and people are getting held accountable um, and people are starting to, you know, support different companies or boycott places that are, um, not in support and I think that's also kind of one piece of this like super complex and wide rooted problem um, is you almost need people on all sides of the corner whether it be politics the local going to youth on record and talking to the youth versus having high power decision makers getting a shift in perspective to actually prioritize these kind of things instead of just keep it as a back burner um so i'm i feel like i'm constantly kind of questioning where where am i in this sort of thing and you can be in multiple spots too um but yeah i've sort of started to find that balance between the music art and human connectivity and then seeing some of the business corporate side is how can i actually be a part of that shift with what would be a financial difference as well as a cultural shift in how businesses operate and stuff like that. Definitely appreciate that. And I feel um, like if you look at past leaders, <clears throat> nonviolent uh, leaders in particular, like Gandhi, and then some of the, the methods that Gandhi used, Dr. King incorporated, like boycotting was the way, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, all right, so you're going to do these heavy taxes on salt. Well, we're going to get our own damn salt from the ocean. Mm -hmm. And then they still try to arrest you. Like, you can't take the ocean mm -hmm. of this militarism just around salt, you know? Like, mm -hmm. that's why we get these terms, you know? Well, now you salty because it's like people, people act crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, they act as if they own everything. And that's mm -hmm. something that I don't believe. Like, I feel like like we don't, we really don't even own our bodies, you know. Um, we have the choices to to like learn our body, but when I look at it, like the Most High, the Creator is in charge at all times, and we have willpower to influence some of the things that happen on the earth. However, some people take advantage of the the positions that they're born into mm -hmm. and other people uh, they recognize that we should all get a piece of the pie mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I just think that we we got to be very strategic and like you said we got to align with the people who are in alignment and we're not going to be able to convince people who are completely on the left uh, or right uh, not on a political sense, but just in mm. general, we can't convince everybody to believe what we believe. But that's where I think radical love and radical kindness comes into play. Because mm. if you can love somebody, even if they harmed you, then what does that look like? Well, they still want to hurt you 
not because they want to hurt you really it's like they're just hurt so they only know how to hurt stuff so from that lens <clears throat> it's kind of like what if i love somebody through all of that you know and mm -hmm. just let your pain be your pain but i don't need to like stoop to that level like mm -hmm. i can have my own morality i can have my own value